Okay, so today I'm going to be looking at my GPU <clears throat> overclock settings and the settings that I use and some of the programs I use and I'm still I'm still kind of tweaking these settings a little bit um, <clears throat> but I think I've got them dialed in about where I need them I've got a couple of programs here uh, I use MSI afterburner plus the Reva tuner statistics server to uh, give me these statistics while I'm benchmarking uh, I've got tech uh, tech power GPU-Z for tells you you know about the graphics card and all that stuff and I got it on the sensors here it looks which will also tell you give you some more information about where you're at uh, CPU-Z I have it open I'm running my 9700k at 5 gigahertz <clears throat> and when you first open MSI Afterburner by default. This is a little bit different of a program. I got this. I, I watch a lot of free the free these. Uh, nice, he's a really good uh, tweaker at tweaking uh, Windows 10 and stuff. So this come from his video. There's a. I'll try to leave a description or a, or a link. Uh, actually a link to where I got this uh, video in the channel and you can look and follow it and you can get this particular MSI it's it's like a portable uh, kind of it's like a portable piece of software basically because it's not really installed uh, anyway <clears throat> um, I've got it set up uh, this is what everything is by default here in Afterburner um, I do have some settings that I've already tested that's in my profile, but I was just going to kind of show you where we're at. Uh, so this is the base profile. Uh, I got a couple uh, <clears throat> programs here that to stabilize uh, for stability of uh, the graphics card to test the graphics card for stability. Uh, first one is Heaven. Uh, Unigen Heaven, uh, pretty good piece of software that I see a lot of people use, and Superposition, uh, another good piece of software to uh, stress uh, graphics cards. So the first thing I'm going to do here basically is just with everything stock, or at de it's not, not stock, everything at default settings here, I'll just go ahead and we'll run a round of... Uh, superposition just to kind of see where we're at so I'm gonna we're gonna do that let this thing load up a little bit <clears throat> and uh, that's really what I really like about uh, having the Reva tuner statistics server is it lets you have all this information um, here now once you get the program running oh, my mouse went away uh, but in the uh, the top right hand corner over there, you can see it also gives some statistics about what's going on. But right now, the GPU is topped out at about mm, almost two gigahertz. You know, 1995, 1980, right around there. Uh, temperatures. 53 degrees looking good here. You can also see that the uh, My uh, 9700k is 5 gigahertz there running at about 50 frames uh, This takes about this takes a few minutes to uh, To uh, run through it's got if you look on the, the right over there it says six uh, scene six of 17 so it's got to go through a few more scenes and uh Usually what I'll do is I'll let it run through, run, let it run through that, and if there's no any, if obviously if it doesn't crash or if there's no kind of flickering and stuff like that going on in the game in in the test here, I'll use I'll usually call that pretty good. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stop this for a minute or pause it, and uh, I'll be back when it's done. 
Okay, so that wraps it up for the, uh, the scene test. And it gave me a score of 7,034. Um, so what we'll do now is I'm going to apply my overclock settings. And so what I'm going to do is hit profile one down here. And which, by the way, and what I did here is I slid my core voltage all the way to 100. Now with this, from what I understand, it doesn't, it, it's not gonna, it's not gonna give any volt, any more voltage. It's not like you're changing or adding voltage. It's just you. It's you're only allow it. You're allowing it to grab as much voltage as it can. Um, in the body you're not really like giving it plus you know a hundred millivolts or something you're just giving it it's just like the power limit I've got my power limit slid all the way to 125 percent that means it's gonna I'm telling it to use as much power as it needs uh, and if you click right here it gives you the temperature limit uh, I also max that out uh, so you don't have so you don't have any thermal throttling so when you get started, I have the core voltage, power limit, and temperature link all maxed out. So once you, once you do that, you hide temperature link, then your core clock comes back. And through testing, I was able to get, uh, I actually was able to get higher a little bit, uh, up to maybe 125 130 I played with 130 it seemed okay but um, I didn't really I don't know because I'm not I'm not exactly new or you know I'm not new at overclocking this stuff but I this card here is about the first I really put a lot of effort into doing so I didn't really see much now, when I went up to like one plus 140, uh, these programs crashed. So that, I knew I wasn't stable there at all. But after I've looked and, and I've actually played Battlefield 5, which is what I'm gonna go through, uh, I decided just to bring this down to 115. And which, by the way, if you look up here on GPU-Z, uh, the perf cap reason, it tells me when you read it, uh, that you're limited by voltage anyway so there's nothing voltage is what hard hold is what's holding this card back as far as it being able to do more from what I see so you know but there's nothing uh, you know nothing we can really do with that so now what I'm going to do is these are the settings that I had and yes I did the uh, I didn't I changed my fan speed to a constant 60 um, which is, you can hear it come up uh, from the default value, um, but it's not really all that loud. I mean, I play with, with headset on anyway, so, you know, I didn't see no reason not to turn the fan speed up some. My temperature stay nice and good, and, you know, I can always move, if, if it ever starts getting warm, I can always slide this up a little bit more. So we're going to go back with these settings, make sure these are applied. And you, I, I could hear the fan come on that time too, but we're going to apply these and we're going to go back and run. Let's see what we have, 7034. We're going to go back and run this same test again, 1080 Extreme. And we're going to run the same test again and see if we can get a better score. So I'm going to let it, I'm going to let the video run for just a minute so we can kind of see how it is, what we're working with here. And then I'll pause it to let it run through its cycle. And I'll also keep a note of the GPU temperature, which right now it's about 46. Um, so doing pretty good running about 60 frames temperatures doing really nice 
CPU isn't doing really a whole lot because it's uh, you know it's all GPU stress. The only thing that and maybe somebody can leave a chat or leave a comment in the chat is these. If you look on the frame times here, I get these little spikes, um, frame time lag spikes, and I'm just I, I'm not real sure what's up with that. So if anybody knows why I might get those while I run this test, uh, leave it in the comments. So I'm going to let this run through its test real quick, and I'll be back to finish up. Okay, so the results were seven, six, five, seven, um, and uh, so let's see. I can't remember exactly what the ones. Uh, hang on just a minute. I'm going to pause. Okay, so <clears throat> the last test we had was a 7034, and this is a 7657, which is a difference of 623. So that's, that's a pretty good uh, improvement from stock uh, to what we have here, plus 115 on the core and 1,200 on the memory clock. Now playing around with this, I felt like I could have actually got 1300, maybe 1350. Um, I, I didn't have really per se any crashing, but actually I probably could have maxed it out. But um, I just rolled it back to 1200. I didn't know if really if there was any more performance even just going that high with it. Uh, and speaking of the memory, um, if you look up here on GPU Z. This card has, when you look right here on GPU's memory type, it'll say Samsung. Um, now they say when you have Samsung memory in these cards, you can overclock the memory a lot further than you could if, say, when you look here and it says, what's the other one, Micron or something, uh, then you might not be able to get the overclock, quite as high overclock with that memory. Um, so that's just a little something to think about to see, you know, if you want to see what kind of RAM or what kind of memories your graphics card has use tech power up or GPU Z from tech power up come here and it'll tell you right there Samsung and I think this only works for 20 series cards I don't I, I'm not I can't say that it works for uh, 10 series or 9 series so there's that um, uh, and the same thing with the core clock. I felt like I've had times where I went up to 120 or 130, but um, I was very limited. Let's see. Let me look at these sensors. I was very limited here uh, on the uh, my voltage. I was just at the, I couldn't get any more voltage. You know, I, that's what was uh, keeping me from doing any more. Basically, was just the voltage. So at the end, I just decided to keep it at 115 on the core. I thought that was a pretty good place to keep it. Uh, like I say, span feed, span feed, fan speed. Uh, I got it up to 60. If my temperatures ever start getting a little higher at times, I can always ramp this up a little bit. And let's see, what else am I covering? Oh, the, uh, the other uh, testing... <clears throat> Uh, the other benchmark I use to, to stress test the uh, graphics is uh, uh, Unig uh, Heaven, Unigen Heaven. Uh, I have the, since this is a 1440p monitor, uh, my settings are Quality Ultra, DirectX 11, and 2560 by 1440. So we're going to run a test in here and see how we look in here too. So we'll, we'll start this. And it'll take uh, takes just a second to load, and you can already see the numbers up there. That's why I really like uh, having that in. And there is some music. I just I can't figure out how to turn the music off of this, so we'll just I kind of have to deal with it for just a minute. But the results in here so far are looking pretty good. Uh, I'm getting. Uh, 2115 on the core, memory's up to 8951. Um, that, I figure that's pretty good. Temperature, only around 50 degrees. Um, so, you know, that 
that's that's very nice uh, I think as far as I know uh, if it climbs on up then we can turn the fans up a little bit more now you notice it kind of jumped back down to 2100 uh, megahertz uh, but the voltage there right uh, right there there's my mouse again right there is the voltage and uh, you know, 1.037 is about the limit it will jump up a little bit i think uh, but not much more and of course gpu is at 97 percent so i'm going to go ahead and close this out and normally what I would do is let this run for a little while and just for stability let it run for a little while um, make sure there was no crashes no artifacting any kind of weird stuff going on and uh, let that run and basically this is about as good as I think I want to get um, uh, like I say, I could probably push it a little more, uh, these clocks, but, uh, you know, I, I think this is a good, this is a good bump from what the, uh, what come as uh, default clocks. So it's a nice little performance increase for basically nothing. And uh, I highly suggest uh, people to do it. I used to be a little kind of weary about overclocking, but it's really... It, it this to me it seems a lot easier than overclocking the CPU because of there's tons more settings and stuff you have to change in BIOS to get these over your CPU overclocks uh, stable. So uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else uh, that I'm really kind of missing here. That's basically it. That's what I've done. If there's anything that I could do different or if I, there's something I'm doing wrong here, please leave it in the comments because, like I say, I'm, this, this, I'm fairly new at this myself as far as getting into it this much. Um, but when you have a card like this, you know, it's and even a CPU like that, I have the 9700Ks. I mean, you might as well get, there's, there's a lot of free performance to get for nothing just from moving a few sliders around and changing a few numbers, so... It seems to me pretty worth it. It's not really going to damage your computer or nothing like that. Um, as long as you don't go too crazy with it. And it's really all about the temperatures. Watch your CPU temperatures. Watch your GPU temperatures. Um, and that's really what you want to keep an eye on the most. Um, this is not really so much as a guide. Um, I guess I could do a guide, which is you know pretty similar uh, to what... A guide really wouldn't be much more than just going through and bumping up your clocks, running tests, see if it's stable, coming back, bumping, bumping, and and that's about it. That's really all you would need to do. Um, people use Precision X1 by EVGA. I just happen to use Afterburner. It's just something I've. Anytime I have played with it in the past, I've just kind of used Afterburner. I like this. I like the way the this is set out and everything, the settings and how everything looks. So. Um, by the way, this was something I forgot, but I wanted to add this back in there, and I don't think I said it during the video, but <clears throat> after you get this stuff set, after you get your clock set, you do not have to have MS Afterburner, Afterburner running in the background. Like I have it on Task Manager here. Um, you don't need to have, once you set your stuff up, once you set your all your settings up, you can just X out of this. Now, what I usually will do is um, just, and I'll, and I'll show you that here in a second because I'm, I'm going to close it out. And if you watch my fan speed, it's at 60% here, like it is here. And when I exit out of this, you may get a little message like that. Um, the fan speed is still at 60%. That's RTSS after close that in test. Okay, and it is all closed. 
MS Afterburner and Reva Tuner Statistics Server is closed. It's, as you can see, it's not running in the background. And yet, it, our overclocks, our settings is still kept. So that's that's the thing I forgot to add in the video. Is you can once you get your settings set, you can exit out. You don't need it running, and it will still keep your overclock profile in here. Now you might have to, like I do, each time Windows starts up, I'll go back and um, just re-enable it. But you know that's that's about it. So anyway, I was just going to throw that in there real quick. Uh, I, I guess that's going to be it for this video. Um, just mainly just to show what I've, what I did uh, accomplish doing this little mild, eh, maybe more than mild overclock. Uh, from what I'm seeing, it's basically most people are getting anywhere from um, maybe five, seven, ten percent gain in uh um in their games and things like that or a boost now so i mean but like a five to ten percent boost from stock is what i'm kind of seeing uh so well that's it for this one uh i thank everybody for watching and i will see you in the next video